Strong from North Dakota for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, all regulation is burdensome. The question is whether or not it's necessary. Being burdensome doesn't mean it's bad, and in a lot of different instances, it is absolutely appropriate. But we referenced The Jungle, and I'd reference another book from that time. It's called An Unlikely Trust. It's about the relationship between J.P. Morgan and President Teddy Roosevelt. Because at the time of Carnegie, at the time of Rockefeller, at the time of one of the most popular presidents in the history of the country, J.P. Morgan was the most powerful man in the world. And as we're busting trusts and as we're moving through all of those things and developing workers' uh, workers' rights and fantastic things from, a, quite frankly, a fantastic president, big business figured out something else. They can comply with regulation. The cost of compliance for a large company is pretty simple to do when you have an entire floor full of lawyers through, through people. And what, they, what, they de what that costs them in, in regulatory compliance, they make up for in market share. Because you know who can't comply? Small businesses. Dodd-Frank was never supposed to apply to small businesses. Never was. Because regardless of how you feel about the financial collapse in 2010, you know who didn't do it? The credit union in Mott, North Dakota. But you know who had to comply with Dodd-Frank? The credit union in Mott, North Dakota. And when you, have a, when you have three employees and you have to hire two more just to deal with federal regulatory and compliance, you know what you don't have anymore? A credit agency in Mott, North Dakota. And we're talking about a death by a thousand cuts, and that's fine, but sometimes there's just one. Right now, the Biden administration is running a regulation, Rule 111 of the Clean, Power, or Clean Air Act. And it's going through the process. And there are a lot of egregious things that exist in it. But you know who's going to be okay with that? Larger oil companies. They'll figure out how to comply. You know who's not? Small oil companies, the ones that pr produce oil and gas in Western North Dakota, and how they continue to deal with this. Uh, Mr. Mulligan, talk to me about that and the, the nature of the regulatory regime and how it exists and why it is so detrimental to small businesses as compared to large corporations. Uh, thank you for your question. I think you explained it pretty well in terms of the specialized resources that a large corporation would have to deal with that. Um, you may find the 2020 economic report of the president interesting there. We talked about, again, first of all, my testimony was about things since 2009. The jungle and those things are like before my grandparents who are all dead. <laughs> those, the, the regulations that have been going in and out in the last few years are very different than the ones from a century ago. But um, in the economic report of the president, we talk about um, how President Trump was deregulating um, entry into business, helping small businesses get in. And we showed some evidence how these stocks crashed of some of the bigger companies who were protected by these regulations. And these allowed medicines to get people quicker, so it saved lives. You know, the idea that regulation saves lives, a lot of the regulations we have today, they cost lives because they do reduce competition, they make it harder for people to, to get health care, to get medicines and, and things like that. So um, the small businesses are very important even for saving lives. One of the, for me, the most concerning aspects of the program, of the proposed rule in 111 is it would delegate regulatory authority to third party non-government organizations. The EPA is saying this is such an important thing for emissions and all of these things that they're going to allow activist NGOs to, to, to monitor air quality in Western North Dakota. And instead of placing the burden of proof on the actual activists who are regulating this, the burden goes onto the company to prove that those, that doesn't work. If that sounds terrible, that's insane. I, I mean, I think the issue about the regulatory regime has a lot more to do with pushing an ideology, which is where people get frustrated with us. So, Mr. White, should we re should Congress revisit? I mean, the Supreme Court's doing it for us, right? The EPA has been struck down twice in the last 18 months. But how should we look back at, at focusing Congress, so making ensure that these agencies are actually passing a regulation based on conduct and not ideology? Well, first of all, the point you raised about the outsourcing of enforcement power outside of government is a very important point, and I'm glad you raised it. Second, I think Congress needs to modernize the Clean Air Act and other statutes. Congress needs to write more standards itself so that the agencies can focus on enforcement, because as mentioned before, enforcement is often sorely lacking. Sometimes the problem is too much enforcement. Sometimes the problem is too little enforcement. Congress should write the policies. Agencies should enforce them. 
And then I would just say uh, this particular issue, the fight isn't between regulation and no regulation. The fight is between dual regulation or allowing states that are already doing this work, like North Dakota, like New Mexico, to continue the regulation without. The federal government is heavy-handed, and it is not very dynamic. And with that, I yield back.